Welcome to episode 76 from Perfect English with Danny. This episode is about vocabulary. And to be specific, we will talk about theater and cinema. We will talk about words we can use to describe theater and cinema. Now let's start first with the theater. Now I will talk about a common thing we say when we go to the theater. And we will figure out the meaning of some of the important words that are related to the theater. We went to see a new production of Hamlet last night. The sets were incredibly realistic and the costumes were wonderful. It was a good cast and I thought the direction was excellent. Toby Cartwright gave a marvelous performance. It got rave reviews in the papers today. So, before I continue, let me just focus on a couple of words here that are related to the theater and that are worth learning so the next time we want to talk about the theater, we have some new words in our arsenal. Now, let's talk first about the sets. We said the sets were incredibly realistic. Now, when we talk about the sets of a play or at the theater, what do we mean? Now, the sets are the scenery the buildings, furniture on the stage, or in a studio. So these are the sets. We said the sets were incredibly realistic and the costumes were wonderful. Now what are the costumes? The costumes are the clothes the actors wear on stage. And we moved on by saying it was a good cast. So what is the meaning of cast? Now cast are all the actors in the performance. And then we said, I thought the direction was excellent. Now, the direction is the way the director had organized the performance. Then we said, Toby Cartwright gave a marvelous performance. Now, obviously, the meaning of performance is the way the actor performed. But we want to notice here the collocation we use. We say, an actor gives a performance. So we use the verb, give a performance. So remember, learning vocabulary is not always about learning new words. A lot of the times, it is not the new words you learn, it is the new associations or the collocations, words that go together. That is also something worth noting. So if you want to take notes, it is not only the new words. Remember, we learn a lot by not just writing down the new words, but also by taking notes about the collocations we learn. And in this case, the collocation is give a performance. So we use the verb give with performance. And then we said it got rave reviews. Now, when we say it got rave reviews, That means it got very enthusiastic comments. And that is a positive thing to say about a play. Now let's continue talking about the theater, but this time with something that is a little bit different. Dance usually refers to modern artistic dance forms. Ballet usually has a more traditional feel. Unless we say modern ballet. A comedian is a person who entertains people by telling jokes. They may have a show of their own, or they may feature in a show with a lot of different entertainers. The people who watch a show are the audience. Viewer is only used about someone watching a TV program. So, we have a couple of words we may learn here. Now, first we're talking about dance, and we talked about ballet as a traditional kind of dance, unless we're talking about modern ballet. But then we talked about a comedian. Now, When we say this person is a comedian, what does that mean? A comedian is a person who entertains people by telling jokes. And there is the famous word, a stand-up comedian. And a stand-up comedian is a comedian who uses gags or professional performer who tells jokes and performs comical acts. And we also said they may have a show of their own or they may feature in a show with lots of different entertainers. And when we say entertainers, we mean people whose job it is to entertain others. And finally, we differentiated between the word audience and viewer. Now, audience is a word we use to describe the people who watch a show. A viewer is different. A viewer is indeed a person who watches a show, 
but from the comfort of their own home. They watch it on TV. Now there is a note here before we move on to talk about the cinema. that When we refer to a performing art in general, we can leave out the definite article. For example, we can say, are you interested in cinema, ballet, opera, theater? Or we can say, are you interested in the cinema, the ballet, the opera, the theater? So here we can leave out the definite article. We can leave out the if we want. But if you want to say something specific, you have to use the. For example, if you want to say, would you like to come to the cinema or to the ballet, the opera, the theater with us next week? And here we're talking about a particular performance. We're not talking about a performing art in general. So keep that in mind. If you're talking about performing arts in general, you can leave out the definite article. But if you want to talk about a particular performance, remember to use it. And now we will move on to talk about the cinema. Now, here's a conversation between two people talking about the cinema. And after we listen to this conversation, we will focus on a couple of words. Our local cinema is showing Spectre again next week. Do you fancy going to see it? Yes, that'd be great. I love the opening scene at the carnival in Mexico City. The James Bond films are always set in great locations. Yes, and I think the film really captures the human side of James Bond. That's right. A lot of work went into the script for this, and the dialogue is particularly good, I think. Do you know who the director was? Sam Mendes, I think. He didn't write the screenplay, though. I'm not sure who wrote that. The score is by Thomas Newman. He also wrote the music for Skyfall. So, here, after we listen to this conversation, it is actually a typical conversation to discuss a movie that we saw or we want to see. And some of the words here are very useful, words that you can use in your conversations about the cinema. So, the next time you talk about a movie, you don't just say the movie was good or the movie was bad. You have some more words to discuss movies in more details. Now, let's start with what the second person said. I love the opening scene. The opening scene here, or a scene, is a part of a play or film where the action happens in one place. So, when we talk about a scene, we talk about a part of of a film or a play, obviously, that happens in one place. And then, this person continues on talking by saying the James Bond films are always set in great locations. Now, when we say the James Bond films are always set or are set in great locations, here we simply mean they take place. And this is specific for movies. We say the movie is set, takes place in some location or another. And then the first person said, yes, and I think the film really captures the human side of James Bond. Now, we mean here by capture that it represents very accurately. So here, what the person is saying that the film represents very accurately the human side of James Bond. Or instead of saying represents very accurately, we can simply say captures. And then the second person talks about the script for this and the dialogue. Now, the script is the words of a play or film. The dialogue is the conversation written for a book, play, or film. So the script is the whole thing. The dialogue, we're talking about the conversations. Now, sometimes we can say the dialogue was realistic. Sometimes the dialogue was unrealistic, especially when writers make characters say strange things or things that are not like their characters. Anyway, our focus here is on the difference between script and dialogue. So script is the words of a play or film. Dialogue is the conversation written for a book, play, or film. And then... The first person said, do you know who the director was? Now, the director is obviously the most important person in a movie because he's the person who realizes the whole vision of the movie. This is the person who is in charge of making a play or film. And then the second person talked about the screenplay. He said, 
He didn't write the screenplay, though. He was talking about the director, Sam Mendes. He didn't write the screenplay. So what is the screenplay? We had the script, we had the dialogue, and now we have the screenplay. What does it mean? Now, the screenplay is a text for a film, including instructions for actors and camera operators. If you ever read a screenplay, you will see that it has notes. It has notes about the scene, where the set is, indoors, outdoors, the location, the time of day, etc. And it has some stage directions or instructions for the actors. Now, you can say, for example, actor X walks into the room with an angry look on his or her face, for example. And these are instructions for actors and sometimes for camera operators for the shots to determine what kind of shot the camera operator should take. And finally, this person said the score is by Thomas Newman. What is the meaning of the score? And remember, we're talking about cinema and movies. So the score in the context of cinema. Now, the score is simply music for a film. Now, when we talk about the music for a film, we say the score. So that was about the cinema. Now, let's talk a little bit about some other words connected with events in the arts. Now, the Opera Society are doing a performance of Don Giovanni. Now, here... We're talking about the Opera Society, and here we have a new collocation. Now, remember when we talked about the actor, we said he gave a performance. But now when we want to talk about the Opera Society, we can say they are doing a performance of Don Giovanni, the famous opera by Mozart. We can say, for example, the National Theater has a very large and versatile stage. Now, when we talk about a stage... We're talking about the area above ground level where actors perform. This is the actual place where they stand and act. We call it a stage. And here we remember the famous line from Shakespeare's As You Like It, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. And now let's continue with some other expressions. We say, for example, what's on at the cinema or theater next week? Now here, the thing to note is the two preposition we use here. We said what's on at the cinema, the theater, etc. next week. So remember, the idea is what's on, and then you use at for the cinema and the theater. What's on, you're asking about what's playing, what are the performances next week, etc. So what's on at the cinema, theater next week. We can say sometimes they use our school hall as a venue for concert. It's a little small, but is otherwise quite good. Now, the venue for an event or activity is simply the place where it will happen. So that is the meaning of the venue. And finally, there was an actor on TV last night promoting an interesting new play he's appearing in at the Globe. And when we say promoting an interesting new play, the word promoting is providing publicity for. It's something like advertising, but it's not exactly advertising. It's when somebody goes on and talks about an event and tries to draw the people or the audience's attention. And the noun from promoting is promotion. And here we said a new play he's appearing in at the Globe. When we say a new play he's appearing in at the Globe, he's not just going to be there. He's going to be acting in it. So he's appearing, and we're talking about an actor, that means he's acting in it. And the noun from appearing is appearance. So we can say, for example, this actor's last appearance was very good, was miserable, etc. That means what last acting, last performance. And so that was all I have to share with you today about the theater, and the cinema. And all the words we learned today are very useful. You can use them in your conversation from now on. Don't just get stuck with talking about a good film, a bad film. I liked the film. I didn't like the film. Use more words. Talk about more details. Speaking is not just learning what's necessary to say. If you want to take a step further and make your speaking a lot better, it is by challenging yourself and going a little bit further. Talk about details. Now, the words I shared with you are not all the words you will ever need to talk about the theater and the cinema, but they're a very good start. 
It's a starting point to start challenging yourself and to start to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Don't just use the words you know to make conversation in English. If you do it this way, your progress will be very slow. Always challenge yourself. Step out of your comfort zone. Talk about things you're not that sure about. And trust me, nobody is going to make fun of you if you use the words in the wrong place. But if you don't use the words, nobody is going to enjoy talking to you because all you have to say about the cinema and the theater, this movie was good, this movie was bad, I liked this movie, I didn't like that movie. And that's it. End of conversation. Don't stop there. Talk a little bit more. People like details. People like talking about details. If you would like to practice what you've learned today by taking a quiz, playing some games with the words you learned, these activities will be part of the premium membership of this podcast. Now, the premium membership will give you extra resources and extra quizzes, crossword puzzles, and other activities to practice what you've learned in this episode. You can always become a patron of my podcast in Patreon and unlock all the premium content related to the podcast. So if you feel like you want to learn more or if you want to support this podcast and keep it going and keep the information flowing your way and to the way of a lot of other people, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I will leave a link to my Patreon page in the description of this episode. Now, that being said, thank you very much for listening to another episode from Perfect English with Danny. I will see you again in the next episode. Stay tuned.